muckers and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for clicking on my video today and being here on my channel and being a part of this conversation. I really appreciate it. I'm very excited for today's video because it is something that I've been wanting to talk about and I didn't see a lot of people talking about it when this video first came up. It obviously has to do with Trishy Fishy, the fishy of Trishies, Trisha Paytas. Wow, that was like a little rap. It has to do with Trisha Paytas and the video is so bizarre in question and whenever it comes to Trisha Paytas and the pregnancy, I'm gonna be honest with you, I have not covered as much as what I would normally cover when it comes to drama with Trisha just because I've been trying to be sensitive to the fact that this is a pregnant woman. However, in this video, I cannot watch it without just like wanting to scream my opinion because the hypocrisy, everything is so deranged and you know that's my favorite word, I love saying deranged. It is crazy and I went through the comments and it automatically gave me that like fix of like knowing that like I wasn't going crazy but Trish uploaded a video like two weeks ago on the Petas Hackman family channel, you know the way they have a family channel now? No comment. And it's basically called Why I'm Scared to Have a Daughter. No. Whenever I was going into this video, it's a 20 minute long video, I was expecting Trisha to basically say that, you know, she's she's nervous to be a mother, she's scared to be a mother, she's scared to raise a daughter, and you know, she's never done it before. That was what I went in, you know, thinking this video was gonna be. And I wanna ask you before we get to this video, what you would think, why I'm scared to have a daughter, with Trisha crying in the thumbnail on the, the you know, the family channel, what you think that video would contain with Trisha talking about? Because for me, I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm not gonna bullshit you, I did think it was gonna be that, and I was gonna watch and be like, you know what, that's completely valid. You know, first time mother, even if you're not a first time mother, to have a new child is a big responsibility. It's a big change of life and it's incredibly scary and there's so many things that come with it. And so I was gonna watch this video normally and just kind of be like, oh, like I'll hear what she has to say. But then the more and more I get into the video, the more and more I just wanted to scream because you're aware of my opinion of family channels. And I have talked about the fact that Trisha has already rebranded to Paytas Hackman Family Channel before the baby is even here and I do have a big issue with that and I don't mean to be like, ooh, I have an issue with that and I should be listened to. All I'm saying is I think that in a couple years we are going to see one of the first generation family channels, children, who will now be of like 18, you know, that kind of age, suing their family for emotional distress exploitation and I think that I'm literally putting it down here I believe that this is gonna happen I really 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 do that in the next five years ten years at a stretch there is going to be a lawsuit where a child turns on their parents because they're not a teenager and they're aware of the fact that they've been recorded since birth some of these you know exploited they're crying their tantrums their happy moments there was never a genuine moment with their parents there is going to be a lawsuit like that and the child is going to win and I think until that happens we are not going to see, you know, certain laws put in place to protect the children on YouTube because I've said this time and time again but I'm going to continue saying it because I think it's a great point. Disney actors, Disney children, they grow up and they talk about how they felt exploited and they felt, you know, that they, their childhood was stolen from them. Let's look at the Cole brothers, Selena Gomez, Demi Lovato, Miley Cyrus. All of these child stars have talked about the fact that they had, Jeanette McCurdy is a great example. She literally has a book coming out that I'm pretty sure is called I'm Glad My Mom Died or something like that. And the book is talking about the fact that her mother forced her to be an actress and forced her to do all this and forced all of these um, traumatic things to happen to her because then she was on TV and she had to care about her appearance from a young child and she was being bullied and she was being exploited. It's this big word, right? There are now laws for child actors where they can only work a certain amount of days and certain amount of hours and they're protected when they go out. Children on YouTube is not like that and a lot of people get so attached to family channels. Sorry, I want to keep this brief so I'll cut it off in a minute. A lot of these people who watch family channels get connected to the children because they watch them grow up. That's naturally going to happen, as creepy as I think it is. And then the children grow up and realize that, oh my god, there are millions, thousands, hundreds of people who know everything about me and I don't know anything about them. And they know everything about me since I was a child. I don't get to properly grow into the person I want to be because people will already have a perceived notion of me. That's basically my overarching point. I could go on and on and on. I'm not going to. I know that we've had that conversation many, many, many times. So this video is Trisha saying that she's nervous and scared to have a baby girl because all she wants to do is protect her. And then in the same breath, 
is talking about in other videos that she cannot wait to vlog with her child. That she cannot wait to do dress up with her child online. And that she cannot wait to incorporate her in videos and show that her and Moses are at home, you know, raising this child. And we have a family channel now, which literally in the description says the following the lives of Trish Moses and baby Petas Hackman coming September 22. They are teasing their baby before it's even here. So you're telling me that they're not going to become a family channel and vlog their child. So my issue with this and why I'm so pissed off is Trisha has an entire video crying about that she's scared to have a baby girl because all she wants to do is protect her and keep her safe and is uploading this on a family channel in which this child is going to be put online and exploited. Now, before we actually watch the video, the comments are calling this out. Someone said, if you care about your daughter, don't exploit her online. That will protect her. Another one said, um, protect her by not putting her on the internet. Someone said, you can't protect your child from absolutely everything that comes their ways, but you can give them the tools to deal with the negative experiences. And someone else says, like not putting them online for who knows who to watch. So basically, family channels love to say, our audiences are young children, we have, you know, parents watching us. You have millions of views, you do not know where all of your demographic is. And I'm sure that there's a lot of creepy people watching those videos for the wrong intentions, especially whenever you're titling your videos that are putting the children in a vulnerable position. Someone said, Trisha talks about that she wants to use this child to heal herself. And that's another thing that we're going to get to when we hear it. But basically, Trisha openly talks about this video in this video that, you know, she didn't feel like her dad was necessarily for there. Her mom was always working and busy. And, you know, that's all like it, it very much so is she says that she can't she cannot wait to like redo it almost like her childhood with this daughter that she's going to have. And that is quite alarming to say. I don't want to speak for a mother, but all I'm going to say is from, from an outsider's point of view, to preemptively assume that your child is going to heal your trauma is a scary thought and is a very vulnerable thought. Um, and I'm trying to be as sensitive to that as possible. But all I'm going to say is it's nervous to watch someone say that they basically cannot wait to like heal their childhood through their child because when you have a child, I believe that you should, you know, focus on yourself, work on yourself, know your strengths, your your weaknesses, things from your childhood, focus on that, what you want to do differently. You don't, you don't act like this child is going to, you know, I'm going to live vicariously through this child and my parents didn't do this to me, so this child's going to heal my inner child and stuff like that because that is a lot of pressure on an unborn child. But let's get into the video. So again, I am watching this for fair use commentary purposes. This is on the Petas Hackman family channel already with 1.4 four million subscribers because it was one of her old channels and it's called why i'm scared to have a daughter so again watch this for fair use commentary purposes trisha do not come for me let's hear what she has to say i'm driving i don't know when i'm gonna ever post this vlog but i'm really emotional today Whew, today we got a call from um the doctor's office and um basically at the end of your around the 12th week mark, or I guess whenever, my arm was like the 13th week mark, um, they offer obviously to do a, a test, like a blood test for, to test the baby's, um, you know, um, kind of genetic testing, mm -hmm. um, to see if there's any complications with the baby or if the baby's going to have, they, you know, they can't really tell, but they tell, you know, there's those certain tests you take. Yes. And, um, and then along with that is that the gender, you can find out the gender. And um, her gender reveal official party is two weeks away, so you'll probably see this after this. Um, so we both, I, I really did want to be surprised because we planned the gender reveal, it's, it's kind of far away. Um, I was like, we just want to know, we just want to know because we want to like, you know, start referring to baby as, you know, yeah. she. Yeah, and, makes um, sense. And also just like get the, the nursery around and all that kind of stuff. Because we had two different themes. We had, we had names picked out for both. Um, first and foremost, and the thing I'm so grateful, but you guys know my whole thing is gratitude. And <laughs> that is your whole thing. Thanks. And like for everything, honestly, like either way we have a baby, you know what I mean? No matter what the test results came back for the genetic testing, you know, like you're going to, you are prepared to love that baby, you know, and, and mm -hmm. as long as it was healthy, right? Like, would love the baby if it wasn't but you know there's i don't even want to talk about it because it's just like really really sad there's obviously certain things where like 
I don't even talk about I don't even put it out there for anybody. But as long as we have the baby and the baby is healthy and or just, you know, in this world with us, it will love no matter what. And anyways, that those tests came back great. They came back with like low risk basically is what they call it. Good. Um so that Glad was to hear. really great. That like I think that settled my heart and body because I watched videos where it's just it's just too tragic to talk about where it doesn't always it's not always great news. Whew. And I'm older and you know what there's always that chance. Um so that was that was the first thing I was like so relieved. I was like, okay, like that's great, you know, they measure our baby's neck and you know they can, you know they just they always say it's great and our doctor was like, you know, boring news he says or no news is like good news, you know, like mm -hmm. your baby's great, it's, it's healthy, like there's nothing because I feel like we go to these appointments and we're in there for like 10 minutes, like everything looks great. And I'm like, okay, so why, you know? But it's good, it's good to hear those things in case. Um, One thing I do want to say is, first of all, if you watch my videos on 2x speed, babe, slow it down now. Because while we get into this next tangent, I did just want to do that at normal speed. She's giving an update that the baby is safe and healthy. But now I'm going to play it in 1.25x speed. So if you watch my videos on 2x speed, I know a lot of you do. That's how I watch videos. I would slow it down now because you will literally not understand Trish like fish. All right, here we go. It was the most recent. Like, they're so, so, so nice. I don't know if it's the same lady that took my blood. She's so nice. She, um, she doesn't understand that I have on social media. And she's like, she's always like, she's not how you do it with, like, any sort of negative comments. And, like, honestly, like, unfortunately, like, I'm just, like, I just expect negativity. Like, I don't expect it. I just... I don't accept it either. It's just more like it just, I'm, I'm numb to it. It's not accepting, hmm. it's not expecting, okay. you know, I try to put up positive and I feel eventually positive will come back, but it is what it is. You know, people have comments and that's why. Okay. You know that by that logic, Trisha saying I put out positivity and I only get back negativity. I feel like your negativity that you put out for so long is catching up with you and eventually your positivity will then, you know, feed back positivity by your own logic. I literally don't have any issue. It's actually not my issue when people comment that their own issue and energies and all that stuff like that. Doesn't reflect me. But she, um, sorry, I'm like in the slow lane because I'm just like trying to like process all this. And I'm like really emotional, like more emotional than I thought I would be. Here we go. Um, I'm meeting my friend Jeremy for lunch and we had this plan for a while, so I'm not that I want to go to lunch anyways, but I just feel like crying every second, which is maybe hormonal now, I don't know. Um, but we found out, which you guys probably know by now, but I'm going to decide another gender. Um, we're having a girl. <laughs> which like, it's so crazy, like, I I always envision having, like, a little girl, right, like, aesthetics and stuff like that, I am very girly, right, I, I like glitter. She wants a girl for the aesthetics, or whatever, nice. But, you know, I've always grown up with that, like, even even now, I like to play make-believe and dress up, and I just always, and again, not that you can't do that with a boy, of course you can, and of course I would have, I already had costumes made up, but, like, in our, like, in my soul, in my stomach, in my heart, I thought it was a boy, and we took all those old wives tests and like everybody was like, it's a boy, it's a boy. The only one who said it was a girl was my brother who has four kids and he's like, by the third or fourth, I could tell by the ultrasound, like I could tell. Like there's certain things he saw like circles or something. And he, he was the only one, everyone else is like, oh, you have no warnings, it is, it's a boy. We did the old wives tell like if you're craving salty over sweet, it's a boy. We're having a girl and like, it's wonderful and beautiful. And like, I'm so excited because it's like, that's what I know. Right. I, what if my, you know, my son? One thing I do want to say, and I, I don't mean this just to say it in like Trisha's defense, but a lot of people were giving her criticism for like seeming like disappointed that she was having a girl. Um, one thing I do say is I did actually look into that, and it is a very common thing for um, people who are pregnant to kind of think they know um, what they're going to have. And, you know, to have some sort of disappointment, not necessarily disappointment of the baby, but like disappointment that like what you thought was wrong. Um, so in this instance, Trisha was dead, certain that she was having a boy. She was referring to she is he the entire time. And, you know, they were starting to get boy things or whatever the fuck that means. Um, and I do just want to say that I did look into it. I know a lot of you were commenting this as well, and it is quite a common thing. It doesn't mean that any person is disappointed that they're having, you know, a girl or whatever. Um, it just kind of means that they're like disappointed in, um, they had built up because they believed themselves they were having something they are not. Um, 
but I did just want to say that I don't think that takes away from um, someone being excited about their pregnancy whatsoever, but I'd love to know your opinion on it, especially if you've had children. And then I'm like, okay, I'll learn, figure out how to do this, I'm not athletic, and, you know, again, my girl can't be in sports too, and I wanted to say, I know the gender can be a, a touchy subject for people, but just because I am non-gender, I... Uh... Gender can be a touchy subject? This is so interesting. Trisha Peta said gender can be an interesting and touchy subject for people. The same person who made a bunch of videos a, a couple months ago coming out as non-binary and we were all respecting uh, Trisha's new pronouns and then a couple months after she uh, found out she was pregnant, she basically went back on all that and was like, no, I've always been a woman. I've always felt like a woman. I've always been she, her. So what is it? Because that's disrespectful to people who actually are non-binary. Because Trisha has flip-flop, flip-flop, flip-flop with it, and you can go back and forth, you can feel, you know, gender fluid. But there was a moment, a couple months ago, where Trisha basically said that, no, I've always been a woman, and I've always felt like a woman, and that was a recent thing that happened. So it is really disrespectful to build a safe space for an audience when you're openly speaking about being non-binary, and then just to, like, be like, oh yeah, there's people who are really touchy about gender and stuff. That was what your channel was a couple months ago. Just to go back on it was really interesting for me. Um, or not binary, I sometimes identify with different genders. Okay. Doesn't mean that I don't believe in, like, um, I don't, like, I, I, so I'm not binary in the sense that I go back and forth between gender, sorry, I'm like, I'm so flustered. Um, so I, I go, like, I identify males sometimes, identify females. Sorry, I don't mean to be disrespectful, and I mean this in the, the most respectful way ever. It's a genuine question. I genuinely feel that what Trisha says there, because she's tripping up so much, is knowing that she said um, about the gender thing and people, and then realizing that she has also said, you know, on the side of, you know, uh, wanting to... What's the word I'm looking for here? I feel like Trisha said something there now about people being sensitive about gender, and then realized that she's also been that person, uh, whether it was for publicity or not, and then is now stumbling to go back on it. That's literally my take on it. And I have been so respectful when Trisha has made those videos coming out as non-binary and using they, them pronouns. I loved it. I was so on board for it. It was great. Those videos were emotional and I thought they were great videos from Trisha. But to then a couple months later just say that, no, 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 I've always been female. I've always been that. And then to kind of stumble in your words here, I do think it is just kind of being like, oh, I've said that and I don't want Reddit to expose me. But you can say your own opinion. Again, I mean it in the most sensitive way, but that's what this comes across as for me. And then a lot of times I'm just me, which is a gender unknown right now. Anyways, I just say all that, like, you know, I, when I grew up, you know, up until like seven or eight, I felt, anyways, I'm going into myself, and listen, it's not about me, that's the main thing. I just, I always feel like I have to explain myself that somebody will take this gender thing and be like, blah, 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 blah. And it's about my... And there we go back to the first part. So it's kind of just being disrespectful towards the gender conversation. So what is it, Trish? Daughter. Oh, there's just so many to say. Um, I I don't know. I guess because I just like felt it, and I just and everyone was telling me I just like was preparing for boy in my mind, Halloween costume for boy, and outfits for boys, and look at the, you know, and I'm like um, learning like the difference between diapers for a boy versus a girl. You know, you got to put like an extra diaper over over a boy because you know, you know. <laughs> so I'm like preparing myself for that and then um and then when she said female I was like I'm so happy I'm so happy and I'm like I can just picture her being so cute um and just perfect in every way and um doing all these fun things with her like a picture you know dressing up and performing or whatever she wants to do but you know when they're little you kind of just do what you do with them and um all these fun things like taking pictures with her <laughs> Oh boy. But at the same time, I got really scared. And I think it was the first time ever in my pregnancy that I'm scared. I'm, you know, almost 15 weeks now. And everything doesn't feel scary. Everything felt actually really natural. And I think, I was trying to like, I literally meditated this morning, actually before my plan, I meditated at like six o'clock this morning, which I haven't done in a while. And then I had to meditate after because I just was like in a state of like shock and almost panic. And um, I had to meditate because I was like, oh. And the reason I was panicking is because I just want to like protect her so much. Now. And again, I'm sure somebody's gonna say this is like, I don't know, I don't even care. <laughs> Something against me, I don't even know the gender, but. What?
She's like preemptively talking about the fact she knows she's going to be called out for what she says because she rightfully can. How are you, how are you going to say that all you want to do is protect your daughter on a channel where you're preemptively teasing the birth of her? I mean, all the comments are calling right for it, so everyone's agreeing here. <sighs> it's almost like idiotic. Sorry to be offensive. It it is borderline idiotic. All I want to do is protect her. What what channel are you uploading this on? Oh, your family channel, right? Okay, your family channel for your baby that's not born, right? Okay, but you want to protect her when she's born, so you're like already making a channel teasing her birth? Oh, okay, all right. What the fuck? What the fuck? No, for me, I feel like a boy, not that you can't screw up a boy, of course you can, but it's just like, I'm a, you know, I, I was raised a girl and I just want to protect her and I just feel like, um, my parents protected me the best they could, but they both worked all the time and, um, but, you know, we had to. My mom worked four jobs, but she had to. And my dad worked really hard to sell this company that made no money my, up until I was like 11 or 12. And, you know, he made no money and had to work all the time because it was his company. And, and so, like I said, of course they protected me the best they could. But at the end of the day, like, they were always working. And I just, um, I'm like really thankful. I guess when after I meditated, that panic and fear turned into, like, gratitude and, like, like true gratitude where it's like, you know, I, I faced this fear because it got kind of dark, you know, of like, I, I don't know if people, I wasn't protected, like maybe I can't protect her, but it, the, the gratitude, oh my God, I'm being so emotional, like this is like the only time I've ever cried that it's really weird. This is a great conversation for a mother to be having, but I think it completely discredits it when you're, and like talking about your parents not protecting you because they were working all the time and you're uploading a video on a family channel in which is your work as well. So your baby is going to be your job, which gives you content, which gives you money. <sighs> like, <sighs> what? What? I haven't been like hormonal or anything. This gratitude came in uh, over me and it's just like, you know, I work from home and so set my own hours. And you're gonna be working with your daughter. A really relaxed job and a really great job and I get to always be home and set my own schedule. Meaning I can always be with her and always protect her. While you're working. Sorry. And I felt really grateful, and then I felt a sense of ease, but I just... Camera just died. Let's start again. That's whenever my camera's like, Adam, you've been talking for too long, but I'm not gonna stop! ...time, and I obviously didn't have that either, because a lot of people don't. And... You know, ultimately, I'm someone who also has his own schedule and sets his own time. About and Moses. ...can be there for her in a way... I know my dad probably wanted to be for me, but couldn't. He lived in California, I lived in Illinois, and I could never understand why. And he did try his best. I know he did, and I love my dad so much, but it's like... I just, I just want... And I know there's other circumstances where people don't have both parents, and it's really sad, and that's life, and... Um, no, 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 tomorrow. Does this equate in the conversation of you degrading Ethan and Ella's parenting for having a nanny, and said that you would never do that? Does that equate into this at all, either? Like, there's just so much to take in here. But... I just, um, I felt, I just had that, I guess, I don't even know, we filmed the clip of, of me getting the call, I wish, this was filming again, but we should have probably woken in, I guess, maybe he got himself in, I don't know, um, I think there was that, that shock, it was, and I, I didn't even know, I literally got pink because I have pressed on nails for the gender reveal, like, I, I had, I had powder blue and everyone thought I was thinking that I had a sexual boy, it would be calling, <laughs> every time, oh, look at him, look at his little feet. And now it's like a little feet. And it just changes things so much. And, like, not in a bad way at all. Like, I, anyone who knows me, 
would know that I would want a little girl like to dress up and like play with and <laughs> love, of course. I just got really scared that I was gonna screw her up. I messed her up and I just thought there's no way that's gonna happen and um, I won't let it happen and Sometimes people say, like, you know, you have, the people have kids and they, like, live their dreams through them or whatever. But I, it's not about living my dreams to her. She can do whatever she wants. But it's really about, I don't know. I don't want to say doing things right because, like, I don't want to, like, my parents raised me, you know, the best they could. But just feeling through her, you know, making everything right. No, 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 no. No, 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 to heal through her is because that is pushing oh my god I don't, I don't even feel like I want to explain this that's like pushing issues and problems that you have onto your child while they're young and that is the full circle moment oh don't make me explain it further, please, because I'm not going to. But, like, I have, we literally, in school, used to have, like, therapy talks where we wouldn't have therapy, but they would bring in people and they would talk to us and stuff. And there was a time where I went to an all-boys school and there was an all-girls all school and then it was kind of like both of us, like, and then they put us both together for, like, assemblies and one of them was, like, a therapy talk. And literally in one of the statements, it was, you never have a child to heal yourself. And that's just what she said. And that's literally what that conversation brings me back to. I don't like reliving my school days, but that's exactly what that conversation that she just had brings me back to. Having an entire, like, therapy talk with, like, 600 school kids telling them you do not have a kid to heal yourself. Because there were, like, a lot of people, like, starting to, like, get pregnant or at least, like, have boyfriends whenever, you know what I mean, like, the two skills. So they were, like, nervous of, like, um, people having babies for wrong reasons. To hear her say that sentence just, like, brings me back to, and I actually don't want to watch anymore. You, there's more to this video, but I, I've heard enough. And I, I, I think I have enough to show you. Uh, that's just like quite alarming to hear. That has been so ingrained in me, that statement. Like, you do not have it to heal yourself. You heal yourself, and then if you want to have a baby, like... And if you've been involved in trauma or feeling like your parent was using you to heal themselves, like, you break that circle. You break that, you know what I mean? Because that stops, like, generational trauma, generational, you know, problems at a bare minimum. <sighs> I have nothing more to say. Bye. Oh, God.